Welcome to Recovery Recreation Television. I'm your host, Susie Lordy. I'm also the founder and president of a 501c3 nonprofit here in Massachusetts called 24 Hour Power Inc. And we do recovery art and recovery graffiti all over the state of Massachusetts. And way before COVID-19 hit, we were doing events all over the place and people would come up to us and they were saying, Susie, there's nothing fun going on around here. Now we know that's not true, but we realized right then that we better go hunt down stories and report on them every single month. Something fun, something interesting, something healthy for them to do. Whether you're in Fitchburg or Falmouth or anywhere in between, every month, join us here for Recovery Recreation. Don't think you can't have fun sober. You just haven't hung out with us yet. Here with us today is LaShira Nolan, the founder and executive director of We Got Us. And we also have Kareem King, who's the Director of Community Engagement for We Got Us. Lash, as you like to be known as. Yep. And Kareem, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us, we're excited. Lash, what is We Got Us? Yes, uh, well, Susie, I just wanna thank you again for allowing us to, to share this space with you today. And We Got Us is a collective of Black health professional students, health professionals, college students and community members who are all dedicated to bringing education about COVID to Black communities and making sure that Black communities in the greater Boston area have access to the COVID vaccines. Um, so our pillars are number one, to empower through education. Two is to convey, not convince. So we wanna give folks the tools and information they need about the vaccine. We're not trying to convince anyone to get this vaccine because we want them to make the best decision for themselves in their mm -hmm. communities. And the last pillar is public health first. So we wanna make sure that people know that even though these vaccines are a very powerful tool, the most powerful tool is making sure that we continue to wash our hands, socially distance and wear mm -hmm. masks. So we're gonna be out in the community, making sure that folks have access to PPE and advocating for policy that is going to improve public health in infrastructure beyond just the moment of this pandemic, because that's how we're gonna to continue to stay healthy beyond just COVID-19. Sure. Now, Kareem, how did you get involved in all this? Yeah, so it's a funny story, actually. Um, so Lashira, uh, she's, she worked, she's a medical student at um, Harvard Medical School. And she basically like, um, I found out about it through like another uh, friend that she has. And they basically they told me like, you know, this is a group that's working to like increase like health equity in the black community. And like, they're basically like, trying to like educate people about like COVID-19 and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, this sounds like really interesting. You know, like I wanna, you know, I yeah. wanna find a way to kind of give back to my community in the best way possible. And uh, this program seemed like the way to go. What are some of the misconceptions about COVID-19 and the vaccine in general that you're trying to dispel? Yeah, I mean, there's so many. It just depends on what day and what social media site you're on because there's all kinds of stuff that's out there. Um, some folks have started to talk about how they think that the vaccine was made in a factory and was purposefully uh, released by the government as a way to control the population. There are some people wow. who might say like, yeah, you know, the vaccine has a microchip in it and it's and it's going to, this is gonna be the way that the government's going to track us. Um, um, some folks feel like the that you will actually get COVID-19 from getting the COVID vaccine. Um, and I think that a lot of these misconceptions come from the fact that there hasn't been a large push to make sure that information is provided to communities in a way that they can truly understand, whether that be language barriers or whether that be cultural barriers. Mm -hmm. And I think that what's happened is that a lot of misinformation and false information has kind of filled that void. Um, it's not necessarily just the misconceptions that have been driving a lot of the challenges we've seen with the vaccine. It's also access. You know, we've, we've oh. seen recent studies that have come out and it shows that Black communities, they want the vaccine just as much as, as most Americans, but it's been where the vaccine sites have been placed and a lot of them have not unfortunately been in our communities. So I think that that's something that we really also should be talking about today as well. How are you engaging the people out there that, that we need to you know turn on to what this is all about? Mm -hmm. So a big part of like, uh doing outreach to the community has been like looking for partners um, in the community who have already been like on the ground and doing this work. We want to find people who kind of understand like how this community works and also like what people need and basically working with these people to kind of find out like how we can best be of service like during this time. 
Yeah, so thinking about that, um, one of the organizations we've been working with, their name is Get Out the Vaccine. And basically what they've been doing is like having a mobile clinic where like they will set up in like someone's like apartment building and say like, you know, we have the vaccine downstairs. Like if you need it, like, please come down and get it. You know, that kind wow, of- Wow, like, that's really awesome. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> like that kind of like work just really getting out into the community, like telling people like, you know, we have resources they need. And also like that we're here to answer any questions they may have, just having those conversations. Absolutely. Now, in terms of in terms of reaching people, when you come to Brockton, we can't wait. 24 Hour Power is thrilled with the opportunity to partner with you for our very first event together, which is going to be Saturday, April 10th from 12 to 4 p.m. at the Old Colony YMCA parking lot on the Allen Street entrance for people that are coming. And this is a family friendly event. This isn't just for little kids. This is for adults. This is for Brocktonians in general that want to know about what's going on. And um, we found a really cool way to introduce you to our peeps by having you there with a fun event going on. And actually we have our master graffiti artist, Rowdy Reckless. He's also going to be on this segment a little bit later on to talk about his art background, but he's going to be there and he's redesigning your We Got Us logo, which is already cool, don't get me wrong. Um, but at this event, we have so many neat things going on. I mean, we're going to have, he's gonna be outlining your logo and kids are gonna come up and fill it in. And then kids are also going to be able to make these really cool hand molds um, to show the Brockton show of hands, right? Because we're coming together as a community to meet you and get to know you. And what can we expect from you at this event. I will say um, the first thing you can expect from us is to be there kind of like as a resource to the community. You know, ha we're going to be having all these fun events. And we want to make sure that we're just kind of interacting with people, you know, getting to know them um, in addition to having that information, so. Exactly. And what's the best way for them to reach you anyways, though, if they need to get in touch with you? Yeah, so the best way to reach us um, is our website, uh, wegotusproject.org. And then we also have an email, um, info at wegotus.com or dot org. What happens when God willing, COVID 19's in the rearview mirror. Something that's really special about what We Got Us has been able to do is, is we, we created this in three months. We created this wow. partnership of communities and this coalition of people who are really invested in supporting one another in this really beautiful way. And we want to make sure that that continues beyond just COVID because I think COVID was just the, the, the event that gave us this impetus to say, we need something like this to, to be created. Mm -hmm. And I think that people are gonna to continue to need information about various different health topics, whether the, whether it's colon cancer, prostate cancer, diabetes, hypertension. We want to create intentional spaces where we can bring health professionals and people who have the knowledge about these different medical diseases and public health and connect them with community members in a way where we can come together, do graffiti art, eat good food, and just love one another and also learn about how we can protect our health. And I think that I see We Got Us doing that forever down the road. And I think that it's gonna be a really beautiful and powerful thing. You know, that's that's so important. And, and the people of color in the community, they really need a voice. Are there going to be people that are going to be able to address the fact that we need people to help them in Creole and Portuguese and things of that nature? Absolutely. That's something that, that really is the next step of our organization is trying to make sure right. that all of our material is accessible as possible. So these are even for folks who have disabilities, for example, making sure that all of the different things that we do online are accessible. Um, I think at first we were really trying to get the foundation, but now mm -hmm. we just want to continue to get better to make sure that every single person who needs the resources of We Got Us has access to them. So I'm personally excited as all get out to have you at our event. And that's gonna be again, Saturday, April 10th from 12 to 4 p.m. at the Old Colony YMCA parking lot, which is um, on Main Street, but it's in the back. It's in the Allen Street um, parking lot, but we'll, we'll have a flyer out for that. Information is going to be on recoveryrectv.com's website. I know it's gonna be on We Got Us's website. And, um, already is, y'all. Yeah, already yeah, man. We're, we're gonna we're gonna have partners there and some music, and uh, it's just gonna be really a good time and and a nice way to bring together a community that really we we need to come together outside for a change, okay? So we yeah. can actually socially distance outside and weather permitting, have you know a heck of an afternoon. So um, 
before we before we wrap this segment, it's important. Kareem, where do you see we got us down the road and your role in the organization? So down the road, I see why we got us being um, not just about COVID-19, but also being about, like the show I was mentioning earlier, a space for all of us to kind of, as a community, come together and understand like what information we need and also making it accessible to as many people as possible. We think about one of the overarching goals of We Got Us to be a national model for how to be uh, an effective vaccine campaign in minority communities, but also a way to kind of be a space to like understand information also for them to come if they need help kind of like going through the medical system. What year are you in now? Yeah, I'm a sophomore um, at Harvard College. I'm also a pre-med student. That's great. You're one of the future leaders of, of our community. Lash, where do you see this and where do you see you? A little bit down the road. Um, so I, I'm in complete agreement with Kareem. I hope that he will stay on as we continue to grow and and um, and expand We Got Us because he's been such a phenomenal part of this organization and such a vital part of our community. Um, but yes, I see We Got Us continuing. I think my life's mission is, is really to make sure that every Black person in, in America feels like they have a cousin or a family member in healthcare, right? So I want you to feel like you aren't at a disadvantage because you don't have access to the information that so many other communities have. Because we look at you, the numbers and like two to 3% of physicians are black. So unfortunately, wow. we don't necessarily have access to the same information that those who are of the majority in, in the United States, they, they have access to that information. So we wanna make sure that we continue to bring those resources to our communities. And myself, I'm a second year medical student at Harvard Medical School. I'm in my clinical rotations right now. So, um, you know, when I'm not doing my, my things in the hospital, I, I work on We Got Us and I'm excited for my third year. I have a little bit more free time and I think that we can really work on expanding this and and making sure that not just folks in Massachusetts have access to the resources that we have, but also just nationally thinking about how we can continue to expand We Got Us because there's folks, you know, we have the most doctors per capita here in, in, in the greater Boston area, but thinking about my family in Louisiana who, who don't have mm -hmm. access to those resources and making sure that, that they also can benefit from We Got Us. So many exciting things down the line, um, but I think that the amazing team that we've, that we've built and developed um, can, can really make it happen. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't be more proud to partner with you and um, Saturday, April 10th at the Old Colony YMCA parking lot from 12 to 4 p.m. And stick around, we'll be right back. Till then, peace out. Welcome back to Recovery Recreation. I'm still your host, Susie Lordy. Don't think you can't have fun sober. You just haven't hung out with us yet. And now I'd like to introduce you to a very good friend of mine, master graffiti artist for recovery, Rowdy Recluse. Rowdy, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And Rowdy, um, it's so great to have you on the show today, but it's also so great to know that you're in charge of recreating the logo for We Got Us who we just had on the show and heard all about. And the logo was cool already, but it's gonna be way cooler once you graffitiize it. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to I'm excited to see what people think about it. It's coming along pretty well. So the We Got Us logo is basically interlocking hands of all different colors and things like that. And we're gonna be sort of revamping that and making it a little bit more graffitiized. And, and we're gonna let the kids sort of come in and fill it in so they can experience it and, you know, be able to have fun painting. And When did you start painting? Like when, when did you decide you liked art? How old were you, would you say? I've always been into art, but I started painting probably when I was like 14. So once I got into graffiti art and uh, found my expression a little bit more, sort of just clicked and made it a little easier a little bit easier for me. But where can people see your art, like in public places? We got a, we did a pretty big wall out in Lynn for Beyond Walls in 2017 when they first started their program. Okay. Well, the neat thing that's gonna happen is the artwork that you're gonna do for this event is gonna be permanent because not only are we going to digitize the version that you're creating for them to use for their logo, to use for merchandising and all kinds of promotional purposes out there, but the, the big wall piece that you're gonna be doing, um, the canvas itself with the kids, that's gonna turn into a traveling canvas 
that goes everywhere in Brockton, from the police station to the city hall to, you know, Old Colony wide Boys and Girls Club, it's gonna make the rounds. For you to take the time to help us with our cause, it just means a lot. And it means so much to the kids that get to see you and get to meet yeah, you. That's the biggest thing for me, like getting out to give kids experiences that I didn't necessarily have when I was their age, you know, that could maybe influence them in a better way. How do people get in touch with you though? On a, you know, just a regular basis is probably Instagram. Rowdy underscore recluse, that's how you can find me. What do you see for some goals for you within the next six months besides getting out of this pandemic? Short term goals right now are probably paint, 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 paint as much as possible. Uh, I've been working on a lot of digital stuff, so I'm trying to get better at that. Way more this year than I did last year. And that's always gonna be the goal. <laughs> that's it you know what and and we have plenty for you to do so and uh so thank you so much for joining us today rowdy and thank you uh, for having me again i appreciate you susan you're doing a lovely yeah. thing I, I appreciate what you do so thank you for involving me we we, we think we it's a mutual admiration society believe me rowdy <laughs> um, very impressed with everything you do and just proud thank to be you. proud to be your friend thank you likewise likewise and on that note Peace out, be right back. We're back with Stephen Murray, who is the state administrator for a hotline called Never Use Alone. And he's the administrator for Massachusetts, New York, and Vermont. Stephen, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, thank you for having me, Susie. And Stephen, let's talk about this revolutionary new hotline, um, Never Use Alone. Some of our viewers I'm sure aren't familiar with it. Could you please, fill them in on exactly what this is. Sure, uh, Never Use Alone was a hotline that was established in 2019 uh, to help uh, people who use drugs to have a safe place to uh, use if they were gonna be in a situation where they didn't have a partner. Um, as we know from data, um, fatal overdoses happen when people are alone. Um, when people use in groups, there's the ability to administer Narcan or call 911 um, or deliver rescue breaths. Uh, and that we, we, we know through data that people who are dying from fatal overdose are doing so uh, usually behind a locked door, uh, whether it's alone in their parents' house or um, away somewhere where they just aren't around people who are able to revive them if needed. So Never Use Alone was started as a national hotline. Um, there are operators from all over the country that man the main 1-800 uh, number. And about a year ago, uh, they started to branch out into state hotlines. Uh, where people could um, start hotlines within their own states. And uh, that way we could sort of speed up the 911 process, um, have people who were familiar with local resources and um, who knew sort of lo local jargon and things that were going on within that state. Uh, we have more than 40 volunteer operators and we are staffed 24 hours a day and are able to take people's calls. Steven, what is your background? Like, how did you get involved in this? Uh, well, I mean, my background's a little bit, uh, I mean, it's a story in and of itself. Um, I'm a person in long-term recovery from opioid use disorder. Okay. Uh, so this year I'll be celebrating um, 10 years. Um, I work professionally as a paramedic uh, for Northern Berkshire EMS. We cover all of uh, North, Northern Berkshire County and parts of Southern Vermont. Um, I came forward about my uh, recovery in August of 2019, uh, September, yeah, August, no, September of 2019, sorry. Um, and uh, the video of my speech, which I gave in uniform with the blessing of my agency, uh, went viral. And so uh, things have been really interesting ever since. I've been uh, working in the harm reduction community. Uh, I'm on the board of uh, an organization called Truth Farm out of uh, Binghamton, New York, um, and also on uh, the board of Josh Rosette Commit to Save a Life, which is a sober housing supportive uh, organization out here. Uh, which basically helps to give people scholarships uh, for their first couple of months in sober housing. That's um, cool. Yeah, so it's you know it's been um it's been an interesting year and a half. Um, <laughs> and now working with you guys in the Heal Study, um, Never Use Alone is being used um, all over the state. Twenty Four yeah. Hour Power um, was was thrilled with the opportunity to recreate your logo and make it graffitiize it, as I call it, and. Um, we're very grateful to our master artist for recovery, Marco Belli, for recreating that and providing the digital rights to it. And this was something that was funded by Brockton's Healing Community Study. 
Stephen, what's the connection between Never Use Alone and the Brockton Heal Community Study? So uh, the healing study is a large federally funded effort to reduce fatal overdoses. Um, it's working in several different states. Massachusetts is one of them. Um, and it's seated at Boston Medical Center, uh, which is sort of the hub for addiction research uh, here in the state. Uh, Doc Wally and um, Dr. Taylor, you know, really forward thinking about uh, harm reduction and, and things that make people better with uh, medication right. assisted treatment. And uh, so the current phase one uh, groups um, found that never use alone was a, a intervention that already existed um, and that it would be really great to sort of reach out to me and bring me in to talk to people about both about never use alone but also about harm reduction um, and sure. so I think one of the things uh, that's been really great is that a lot of places have heard about harm reduction in terms of like using it as tools to keep people safe so like safe syringes and Narcan distribution, things like that. But I think one of the things that I've been able to do is bring the the message of harm reduction, which is more the philosophy behind it, which is that, you know, all, not all drug use is chaotic. And I think that one of the things that we get stuck in the recovery community thinking about, and, and myself also being, you know, guilty was that because my drug use became chaotic, and then I had to go into treatment and recovery in an abstinence-based program, uh, there's this sort of confirmation bias that that all drug use leads down that road. Harm reduction has a bit of a different philosophy, which is that you know people are responsible for their own sort of life and their own destiny. And for some people, they're able to recreationally use drugs and maintain a normal life. Um, they're able to have jobs and kids and- Your volunteers, how are they trained? How do they know how to talk to people? Yeah, so all of our volunteers uh, work, mostly work in the harm reduction field, whether it's in like syringe access program. Oh, that's awesome. They're, and they're already doing like face-to-face -face stuff in their normal job. And this is just sort of like a side extra thing that they're doing. Um, almost all of our people have lived experience um, either in, uh, they're either in like some sort of abstinence recovery or they're actually not in recovery. It, it's really up to them. Some of them are using medication assisted treatment. Some of them are using cannabis as a alternative to opiates. Sure. There's a lot of different pathways to recovery. Um, yep. So our operators go through an initial training um, where they where they learn about like what questions to ask. Um, so like when you call, they're gonna say like, hey, what's your name? And you can just say like, my name is, you know, if you didn't wanna say your name was Susie, you could come up with a name, it doesn't really matter. We just, so how would you like us to, to address you? Um, and then the, the question that you can't fudge is where are you? Um, so, you know, right now, are you at 123 Main Street? Okay, well, does that have a gate on the outside that we need an access code to, to, to relay to 911 dispatchers? Are you in a, is there an apartment number? We've had people call and be like, I live at 123 Main Street. And then it's like, they forgot to say what apartment they're in. So we always ha have them ask these follow-up questions to try to determine more accurately, actually down to the room as to where the person is using. Like, are you behind? A locked door are there other people in the apartment that know do they know if you're using or not like once they start the call they you know that they they ask uh do you have a callback number we determine where their nearest ems agency is we actually have a service now that our hotline operators can call into which will automatically connect them to the nearest um 911 dispatch center to help cut down on times we only have the national hotline if you were using in massachusetts and then somebody an operator in california was taking the call it's very difficult to get from California 911 to Massachusetts 911. Sure. So by having local operators, we're able to cut down those times because you know time timing is everything. How do people even get in touch with you, Stephen, or this organization to find out more and how to how to get involved with you? So we have both a website and a Facebook page. Um, but if you contact the national uh, group. Uh, saying that you want to be a volunteer, they'll put you in touch with the correct state line. Um, or you can contact me directly like on Facebook or, or uh, by email. This month is a big month for us. So we're so psyched that you're on the TV show now because April 8th is our official launch for the logo itself on the bad bus in Brockton. So that when people are getting on and off the bus, they're gonna see this huge, beautiful image and it's gonna have the 800 number and I absolutely love your tagline. Please share that with us. So uh, the national line we use, uh, no judging, no shame, uh, just love. So 
Um, you know, that's really the, the bottom line of this is that we're not looking to push you into treatment. Um, our operators will not even bring it up unless you want to talk about that. It's something that you want to discuss. Um, a lot of callers do express like they're looking to go into treatment and um, we can refer you to resources. But for, for the most part, people just want some company and to be and to feel like they're safe if they're in a situation where they're using a loan. Um, our, our national hotline has had six overdoses um, with six reversals. Um, wow. so, yeah, and, and, and they fielded, they fielded like over 1600 calls already. Um, so things are starting to pick up a little bit on the Massachusetts line. We kind of did a soft launch as we were like building up our volunteer pool. Uh, but in Massachusetts, we're always looking for extra people. So like I said, I, I can't wait for April 8th from April 8th on everybody. You'll be able to see for the whole month of April, you'll be able to see this bus out there. And not only that, um, the bat bus, we also have. 10 ads that are going on inside 10 different bat buses in the city of Brockton and also in Tukas Park. Now this is unbelievable, this is unheard of, but um, the city of Brockton has been so good to us and so good to people fighting stigma and, and just the whole war on opioids in general. And so they have agreed to allow us to put some information about Never Use Alone in Tukas Park, right in Brockton. I think this is a life changer. I can't believe you've fielded over 1,600 calls and you've only been around since 2019. That tells you something right there. Yeah, you know? quite We're honestly. We're lucky to have you in Massachusetts, Stephen. Thank you. The, the, the national hotline uh, took quite some time to pick up, so most of those calls are in the last year. Um, wow. And Massachusetts, you know, so the thing is, it takes time to build trust, right? So we're asking people to get on a phone and talk to someone they don't know that in the moment that they're using. And so like we, we aren't judging you for using. Uh, many of us have no. been in that situation. And I wish that I had had that opportunity to, to reach out to somebody who maybe didn't know me. And, you know, that that would be a good thing, actually. If I had, had been able to reach out to someone who didn't know me, you know, maybe my trajectory would have been would have been different or better. On behalf of our crew here, Stephen, we couldn't we couldn't be happier to meet you and get to know you. You're a real pillar of the society and, and you're going to make a big difference in the war on drugs. Thank you. And I appreciate you guys doing this and I, I hope we can change some minds together. So thanks so much. And that, my friends, is a wrap. So on behalf of our staff here at Recovery Recreation, we hope you have an awesome April. And don't forget, don't think you can't have fun sober. You just haven't hung out with us yet. So until next time, peace out.